Hey folks, Jason, Painfully Honest Tech, uh, here today to talk to you about uh, this ultimate Razer setup. Now, I've been curious about Razer PCs for a while. I, I tried a couple out and I got in touch with the folks at Razer and I said, I want to put together a setup that is like all Razer and all awesome. And so they put together this giant package of stuff for me and they sent it over and I have been using it now for the last couple of months and I'm going to tell you about it now. Of all the Windows laptop manufacturers out there, there seemed to be only one that was interested in kind of building an ecosystem of gear around the uh, infrastructure of their computers. Like, it, you know, the peripherals, but they didn't, they weren't really exciting. You know, they started out making peripherals, mouses, keyboard, mice, mouses, keyboards, whatever it is. And then they kind of transitioned over into making laptops. And I think now they're making PCs as well as I, I'm, I, I've been a big Apple fan and a big part of, of being an Apple fan is loving the aesthetics of Apple. And Razer kind of seems to have taken the Apple ethos, the aesthetic ethos, and like just made it more of a an aggressive sort of boxy thing that is much more suited to the PC gamer thing but not so much that it's it just screams like I'm 12 years old so yeah I wanted to check this stuff out and there were a lot of things that you just can't I couldn't get locally I reached out to Razer and I was like I want to do this soup to nuts like all the way through I want this to be like you know I've, I've got a standing desk that's black I want a setup that's all razor all the time that I'm gonna set up in a spare bedroom that's gonna be sort of like my my gaming setup slash uh, sort of productivity setup and so here's a quick list of what they sent me before I walk through how I have it all set up and how I use it so the whole system runs on a 2020 15 inch razor blade came with uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM stock and then uh, I put 64 gigabytes into it and then it's got an Intel Core i7 1070 1750H CPU that runs at 2.60 gigahertz. Uh, there's a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD in there and I got another one of those and put a two terabyte SSD inside as well. So this thing is like gacked out for just about anything that you could hope to do. The, the, the Blade 15 then connects to a Razer 27 inch Raptor monitor which has 95% of the DPI P3 color gamut, 144 hertz refresh rate, and it stands on the most solid aluminum base that I have ever seen. This thing is, is beastly. It is a tank. It is just unbelievably strong. On the back, it has some, some fabric and the Razer logo. Uh, it's kind of a shame that I have this facing back toward the wall because you don't get to see any of that cool stuff. It has these channels going down the back side of the, of the stand with uh, special Razer green cables that, that, that go through the channels. I, I've never seen a monitor built that had this much attention paid to aesthetics that was also not completely overblown gamery like blah and and looked really really good i've been really impressed with this monitor not just not just because of how cool it is but also the 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 color representation gaming on it has been awesome and uh yeah it's an expensive monitor but if you're looking for a 27 inch gaming monitor and you want something that is uh that is aesthetically pleasing but not way over the top uh, really think about the Razer Raptor because I've been just loving it ever since I got it the, you know Razer's big thing also is chroma they've got they've got RGB that you can uh, basically in everything that they use and the Raptor does have chroma but it's just around the bottom of the of the base which kind of sets it off from the desk it's and, and it can be really tasteful if you go with like one color or just you know something like that it can just be really tasteful and offset uh, the the monitor from the desktop which I found to be really has grown up quite a bit I mean chroma I've, I've, I've used it many times and it's been you know a little bit difficult to use here and there but the thing about chroma is now it's grown up and not only do, does every piece of razor gear that you have sort of 
flow through Chroma. You set up the monitor and do all the all the adjustment of a lot of the monitor's settings through Chroma. But Razer Software now integrates the Philips Hue system so the, that you can hook it up with Chroma and it can like go with music or or you know sort of with the sound of the games or just like some some basic standard like sort of set pieces of light. And if you've got enough Razer stuff plus Philips Hue stuff, <laughs> it really is pretty cool. I mean, I'm flashing some some footage that I took here on on the screen as I talked about this. I to me, it's just really really satisfying. Not only seeing the colors on the screen in the game, but the colors are being also reflected on the back wall and kind of all around you. So it, it really kind of enhanced the game setting. And I can only imagine uh, that if I had more stuff, it would be better than that. The music thing uh, could be relaxing if you were like chilling out to some, some lo-fi, hip-hop, whatever. Uh, the setup is completed with a Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition 60% keyboard with the uh, Cherry MX, well, I don't, they're not, Razer's Cherry MX Blues. And I found that I really like typing on this. Blues are kind of my favorite. I like the click, clickety clackety of them. It fits nicely, uh, just sort of slid onto the base of the monitor if you want it out of your way while you're kind of doing something else at your desk. The only real issue with the Huntsman 60% keyboard uh, is that all of the stuff that would be to the right of the keyboard itself is under function keys. So the arrow keys, you have to press function and use the arrow keys. It play, pause, all that kind of stuff. There's not a dedicated row for any of those kinds of things. So that to me was kind of a kind of a drag. Um, it takes some time to get used to, and honestly, I haven't gotten used to it. So I'd love to see you know at least some way to get those things out of like a secondary menu to use. The keyboard sits on this on this giant extended mouse pad, the Goliathus mouse pad, which it's a nice base to put down for the entire sort of desktop. I do find that with all of these neoprene uh, mouse pads extended or otherwise, they get they get a little dirty, they get a little dingy and a little bit more difficult to clean up. They sent me the Basilisk Ultimate mouse. It has its own little base station and, and it's wireless as well. Uh, you can plug it in, but you can also plug it into the base station and use it wirelessly. It's uh, It's got a bunch of different uh, settings. It's got a little like uh, trigger. It's got, it's got a precision aiming trigger where you can get it with the thumb and a lot of other buttons. I mean, I'm not a big customizer, I guess, of mice, but this mouse uh, works both really well for productivity. I've been using it with, you know, editing videos and that kind of stuff, but then uh, it's also been a really good gaming mouse as well. Now, no gaming setup is really um, complete without a gaming headset, and I've been back and forth with Razer headsets over the years. Uh, the Kraken was never something that I really dug all that much. Uh, and, and I haven't tried everything, but I did want to try the Nari Ultimate because that seemed to me like the ultimate of everything that they could possibly put into a gaming headset. It's big, it's a little heavy, the ear cups are large, and it's kind of it kind of doesn't balance as well as I would like on my head. But through Razer Synapse, there is some serious customizability. I mean, you've got THX certification. You can get that THX stuff taken over your audio in your game. And it's really something entirely different. I've never tried THX uh, for gaming. And I was in a game, a couple of games of Warzone and it was just like, this is crazy. Not to mention the fact that it has hypersense haptics. So you can set those up and, and your the ear, the ear cups rattle around on your head and it's um it's definitely an experience it can be a little over intense if you're not ready for it but i found it uh, like at a light setting i found it to be really kind of fun to to use and i have to say that the sound signature of the nari ultimate i mean they're, they're wireless they've got a lot of bells and whistles going on the sound was actually really good a little bit more bassy than i prefer but because you go into Synapse, you can dial that kind of stuff in to like your heart's content. And I, it took a while for me to get used to finding the sound cues in Warzone with all the different kinds of effects that you could have inside of the Nari Ultimate setup. But they're very well made. I mean, the clamping force was a little, a little loose, 
but if you want a full review of the Nari Ultimate, let me know down in the comments below and I'll dig really deep into how it all works. The only thing that I didn't think to ask Razer for uh, were some desktop speakers. And I figured, well, I, I need some desktop speakers and I didn't want to use like big studio monitors, even small studio monitors that I have, yeah, they, they would be huge on the desk and I didn't want to have the speakers kind of overwhelming everything. So I, ch I decided to check out the Razer Nomo speakers and I got the ones that are just two speakers. They're kind of in the cylindrical single single woofer uh, design, and they looked pretty cool. They have bass ports in the back and bass adjustment, and you know, chroma and all that kind of stuff. But you know, they, they have also like the the Nomo Ultimate, which has another tweeter on top of the speakers themselves and a subwoofer. But that's like six hundred dollars. These were I think two hundred dollars, and for $200, you hope for a really good sounding setup. And honestly, uh, honestly, I have to admit, um, I was very impressed with how good <laughs> they sounded. I, you know, they're not, they're not going to be studio monitors. They're not going to be something that you can, that you can like do critical work with, but just, ha just listening to them, you know, casually watching YouTube videos or whatever you're watching on the TV or something like that. I mean, they are probably the best computer speakers that I've heard. And they look unique enough that they give the desk a special little little flair. And again, they don't take up a ton of space. I really think that they're looking pretty cool. And at $159, they, they, they really are worth checking out. If, if you're looking for something that sounds good, that isn't overbearing to your entire setup. But the one thing I wish with the Nomos is that they had a separate headphone output. Now they do have a headphone output, but what happens is if you have something plugged into the headphone output, then that defeats everything in the speakers and you can't use them both. I would have loved to have seen the Nomo have something that allowed you to switch from headphones back to speakers without having to unplug the headphone cable. All in all, I, I'm really, I, I'm, I'm impressed with Razer's overall kind of quality. All the stuff that I talked about here today is going to be down in the description below. Click through, check it out. If you have any questions about any of the stuff that I have here or any of the other, any other stuff, regardless, uh, let me know down in the comments and we'll talk and have a boisterous discussion. Uh, tell me what you think about the set setup. Tell me what you think you would do differently. Tell me something. Anyway, thanks so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Once again, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.